tell you about a trip we took to uh, La Hensonada in Panama for a community plan. Back to you today. Huh? Oh. So uh, <laughs> this is uh, what we're going to talk about today, where we went, uh, kind of some community background, and what we learned about the community while we were there, our project, and how it kind of broke down into two different sub-projects, and then some summaries and closing remarks. So our journey started in the Chicago O'Hare Airport, and from there we took an airplane to Panama City, which is very beautiful, very advanced uh, city. From there we took a large bus to the city of David, and from there we took a smaller bus <laughs> to the port town of Turkey Grande, and from there we took an even smaller boat, which actually had several more people on it, um, to our final destination, which was the community of Lyons and Island. And that's where we stayed. So we traveled all that way, and when we got there, we were still approached by Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> they gave us this here brochure, which is actually in the native language of the people. They're the Nobe people. This is in the Nobe language. And it's advertising a smartphone app that lets you read the Bible in Nobe. Um, so interestingly, they have a smartphone app that lets you read the Bible in their language. They don't have access to clean, safe drinking water. Um, so here's our journey in map, in case that was hard to follow, there's Chicago, there's Panama, and we went from Panama City to David to Cherokee Grande, and we'll zoom in on that bay, here's Cherokee Grande, and we crossed the whole bay in the boat to Lyons Nada, and we would zoom in farther, but our community is covered up by a cloud on the <laughs> map, wow. which kind of brings up an interesting point about this whole conference, is that these people aren't being designed for really by engineers. They're not being designed for by the people of Google Maps, but they also don't have any sort of infrastructure or um, really any technology available to them that's being designed by engineers today. And that's kind of where we came in. Um, so our mission, we kind of summed it up in some Spanish vocabulary, which I'll teach you now, Puedes Ayudarme, which in Spanish means, can you help me? And that's, that was the original point of our project. We went down there to try to help this community and develop a clean drinking water system for them. But it turns out when you're many miles away from home, you actually end up asking this question a lot to the people of the community. Um, so here's some people that helped us out along the way. First was this guy. Um, when we got off the bus in Cherokee Grande, he somehow knew we were coming, and he was there, and he led us to the boat. And we were a little skeptical because there's the language barrier. But we got on the boat, and he got us to the right place. So he helped us out. Um, this is Colleen. She was the Peace Corps volunteer that was working in this community. So she really helped us out as far as meeting the people that we needed to know and uh, kind of showing us where everything was and she did some translating for us because our Spanish wasn't the best. And these two women here, this is uh, Emilita and this is Carmen, they cooked for us for the week so we would have more time to do surveying and that kind of work. Um, they helped us out in that respect. And in the community, the women are kind of in charge of like taking care of the house and doing the cooking whereas the men do more of the fishing and taking care of the farm. And that's mostly what people eat, is fish or vegetables that they can grow on their own. Here's some food that they served us. We got chicken, which was pretty rare to have down there. That's good. The climate, as you can see by this <laughs> forecast, it rains pretty much every day. Um, it's very much a tropical climate. It's very humid every day. And our first day we got rained out, so we did some studies inside. And the pe our cooks were generous enough to help us as we studied some of the materials that Colleen had. Um, they sat down with us and read some books. So that was fun. Okay, so our initial project, we went back across the little part of the bay to go and work on a water distribution system. And they had an existing distribution line there um, going down to some houses from a spring box. And we were going to go look at extending that distribution line to more houses. And then also fixing some pressure problems that they were having with this tank shown here. So we encountered some problems and we actually weren't able to go through with this project. Um, it was the wet season down where we were at, so getting to the actual project site was somewhat difficult. We had to walk through lots of mud as shown by the picture. Um, and it was very difficult to get up there and some of the distribution lines were also covered in water, so they would have been very difficult to survey. And we also had to take dugout canoes, which was shown here in the bottom picture, 
to access our site, and so we were relying on community members to take us across in these dugout canoes, and they were very rickety. We had put four people in one canoe, and it was we almost fell in the way quite a few times, and the community members got a good laugh out of that. Um, so it was fun, but at the same time, it would have been a big time commitment from us and from the community members, so it would have made it very difficult to um, go to that site every day. So this is showing the distribution line that was pretty much underwater, and so it would have been nearly impossible for us to survey that existing line. And that, that's a picture of us at the spring box, um, which brings up another point. Another reason we didn't go through this project was because we heard from Helene that she had um, kind of given them some suggestions on how they could fix it, but the community hadn't really responded. Um, as you can see here, they started building up the spring box, and so they were gonna like extend it, but they didn't end up following through with that project. Um, so even though we didn't go through with it, we did learn a couple things about the community. So as you can see from these pictures, um, their spigot has got mold growing all over it and then there's a crack in the pipe that they had tried to fix by tying a rag around it. Um, so this project, kind of the initial um, impressions that we got were that sometimes their maintenance isn't the best. Um, they aren't really able to maintain projects sometimes where outside sources come in and start building things. But then they're not able to upkeep it themselves. and so that's not a sustainable project. So um, this helped us going forward now. Um, we kept in mind that if we design a system, it has to be something that they can maintain and that's cost effective for their community um, on their own without outside sources. But we were also able to learn some positive things about the community. Um, they were very enthusiastic about helping us, um, especially on that first day when we were going out in canoes. Um, they cut down coconuts from a tree and gave us fresh coconut milk to drink, which is shown in the picture here. Um, and they were always asking, you know, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Like, how can we help you? How is this going to affect us? And so we're hoping that that enthusiasm will transfer over into um, these new projects that we're going to be looking at. So our new plan, since we weren't able to go through through the first one, um, we went back across the bay to our home, which is located in North Coast, and we went across this paved path that was made by the government to um, more the Nidori community, which is on the other it's on the Caribbean side of the peninsula. And we are going to be looking at two other um, water distribution projects, the Quebrada site and the Poza site, which Maddie and Kelly are going to talk to you more about. Um, so the first portion of our project is the Quebrada, meaning uh, mountain stream. And we kind of group, we group with Kelly and our Peace Corps volunteer and asked what else we could do since that first project limit people based on the amount of time we had in the community. And we decided to focus on um, currently the five homes located in Adore that do not have a distribution line at the home. There's about 40 people um, that are located in the community that don't have water running from a clean source to their home, so they rely on kubos, or five gallon buckets. And it kind of falls onto the women of the house, it's a matriarchal society. So the women and uh, often the daughters or older children uh, stay at home to take care of the home, uh, household and the children. And they take the kubos and have to walk to the source and fill them twice a day. Um, and then bring them, them back home to do everything from cooking, cleaning, um, and just general housekeeping. Um, so it kind of is a huge time consumer at times that gets in the way of their education because the women have to stay at home to take that extra time and effort to walk and collect water. Um, so the community located an uphill quebrada, or mountain stream, that we could utilize um, spring fed. Uh, and we are hoping to essentially use that as a source to bring a distribution line to these five homes or the 40 people that are unserved. Um, so this is just some pictures of our Cape Brava source. Um, just looking down, there's that paved path goes through our community and it was actually located close to the past, so we think it would be easy for them to maintain. And just looking upwards, there's a giant rock covered in vines. The Cape Brava is kind of right behind that. Um, and there's a picture right here. And as you can see, the water is pretty cloudy, um, which brings us to our biggest concern on this project, which was the water quality. Um, we used petrol films when we were there to just get a general idea of what the water quality was like. And from here, you can see um, lots of dots. Those are all bacteria, or um, the blue ones are E. coli, which kind of gives us a sense that the water is not clean, uh, which kind of made us contemplate what would be the best route for the community in order to clean and maintain their water. Uh, and based on our observations, they're obviously, we put in a sand filter or some type of, of in-pipe chlorination. We are concerned that they weren't going to take care of it. So we're looking into the options of doing an in-home chlorination and education program for the community. Um, um, 
So in starting the project, uh, the community kind of went through and Colleen had gone through with some community members to find the source. And uh, she recruited her host uncle to help us essentially clear the site. Uh, they, if this video will load, it's gonna just be a man macheting. They rely on machetes for everything, um, from getting coconuts out of trees, taking care of their thick of the farm, um, and to cut the grass or the jungle in this case. And so um, we had the opportunity to kind of clear a site to survey. <laughs> but, uh, and so we kind of had to clear the site. And with that, they also used the machetes along that paved path we're looking to run the pipe to clear it for tourists. The path's there for tourists to come and visit both La Ensenada and the beach. And so this was just kind of a concern made of taking into account of if there's men that are macheting with full force, um, what would that do to an exposed pipe? Um, so this is just having this whole circle clearing a path for us to actually use our surveying equipment uh, in the jungle. <laughs> um, and then this, so obviously the first step we did some surveying, we used a forestry pro, um, so it's a pretty easy technology. Uh, we added a Kelly surveying from our actual cave route source to various points along the route we're looking at. Um, here's the actual route. Um, so this is our source out here and up there uh, it kind of forks off and we have five homes. Um, and along the line, we kind of did general site observations. We looked at conditions, types of obstacles, like I mentioned, men with machetes is obviously a huge thing we have to take into consideration. Uh, we also have some obstructions, such as trees, that we can't dig under to bury the pipe, um, which is why you see that red dotted line is an alternative route we're going to be using. Um, and then this is just our initial proposed elevation profile, which is just looking at the elevation we change we get from the source to the home. Just making sure that we have enough uh, difference. So obviously the, with the gravity fed water system, we're gonna get water from our source to the actual home here at the end. And then where we're at today, um, we're using EPA net. Uh, it's just a software we, where we can input all of our information um, from water usage to the general data we've collected, the surveying information. So here's just a very elementary model um, in EPA net and that we can kind of use this model to put in the de demand and see if there's enough water capacity for all 40 people in that community, which currently we have come up with positive results in our procedural project. Okay, so the second part of our project uses the POZO source, or the spring source, um, and it has two parts to it. Uh, first, closest to the spring is a drinking water pool that the community members have dammed off, and that they only use to get drinking water from, they don't really use it for anything else. A community member that has also put an addition and distribution line, which you can also see right here, that goes to his home and a neighbor's home. Uh, and then when any water that overflows the drinking water pool, it goes into another pool that they use as a laundry area. It's a big kind of social gathering spot for the women and children in the community. They'll catch up on their day's events or since they last saw each other. So what we want to do from this source is we want to add a pipeline that goes to a water storage tank. It will service 12 homes in the Dory community that don't have access, uh, during, uh, access to water during the dry season. So obviously we tested the water quality, and as you can see, it's way better than that of the Quebrada source. So we think that if we cover up the spring with the spring box, there's less chance of contamination, and so we feel safe in not having to treat this water. This picture gives you a good um, idea of what the Nodori community looks like, kind of as the direction from, from the Reposo source. It kind of highlights two um, things that we saw as alternatives, but kind of puts them away and makes them not feasible. The first is the option of rainwater catchment for the community. Um, so that kind of collects water off of the room into a collection tank and the community members use that uh, to, for drinking water, cooking and cleaning and things like that. But since the um, majority of the homes in the community have thatched roofs, that's infeasible because that can get organic water, organic matter into their water. It makes it really unsafe to use. So we can't use that, plus the cost of putting in a zinc roof or tinder instead of that thatched roof far away the benefits of rainwater catchment. The other option we had was putting a whole distribution system from the source to all of the homes, but as you can see, the train is really low lying, it's really flat, not a whole lot of elevation change. So actually um, getting enough water pressure to all of these homes is pretty much impossible, so we left with the tank options. So that gave us two, uh, that left us two serving four separate tank options. So we have the source here and we went up to the tank, or up to tank one, which goes to um, the paved path, which one runs along here. 
And so we went to Tango Location 1, we're like, oh, maybe we can find a better location. So we continued along the Tank 2 that moves towards more the center of the Nadora community, and that gave us the full elevation profile, as you can see on the left. Um, so we decided on Tank Location 2 um, just because it's closer to the community, and also that uh, Tank is able to fill up overnight thanks to the water flow from the source. So to kind of pull this, all these details together into one goal, what we really want to do is we want to provide access um, year-round to improve water to all community members in Hanori. And to do that, um, we're using the two sources, the Quebrada source and the Pozo source. For the Quebrada source, we need to design a spring box and a water distribution line that services those five homes. And then from the Pozo source, we're also designing a spring box and then a distribution line that goes to a tank to service those 12 homes that don't have water during the dry season. And some of our general project goals are, of course, we want it to be sustainable. We don't want it to be another one of these projects that an outside group comes in and builds something and then it falls apart because the community <coughs> doesn't know how to maintain it and doesn't have the time invested in it. Um, we want it to be a low cost because they are um, very poor. There's, very, there's a very small amount of money in the community. So we want it to be something that they'll be able to afford or that they'll be able to get a grant for. And we want it to be effective and constructible. And to achieve that, we're designing like a construction and maintenance manual that we'll send down there so they can design it initially, but then the water community can hold on to the maintenance manual and know how to fix anything that might break along the way. So they can pass that along so it can continue to be used. And finally, um, we had to ask for a lot of help. We had to say the Pretty Tired Army many times from them carrying us or taking us across the bay in boats and chopping. Um, a surprising amount of rainforest and um, various other things that they help us out with, which kind of allows us to realize that they know the community, they know what they need, they know their resources, and they're always very willing to help. And they really want to be involved in this project. Um, and that's kind of why we're confident that they will be able to build and maintain this system. Uh, thanks for listening, and are there any questions? Yeah. Um, so the uh, go back to like the first slides that the first um, system that has like um, a leak in the pipe where it was covered with. Yeah. 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 